Hey everyone and welcome to Donut Titans with Dry Bar Reviews. Today I'm answering a repeated request where you guys are asking me, how do I advance the agenda of the DB Arcadia, right? Or in other words, how do I upgrade everything? My castle, my buildings, what do I do? So let's dive right in here and take a look because although I have a method in which I use, the answer is still my favorite answer. It depends because I do have an agenda I want to accomplish, but I will always modify, adapt based on the situation I'm in. And that does change in this game from league to league, as we all know. So most of you by now probably already understand that your castle is your main limitation, right? If you don't upgrade your castle, and in about 28 minutes, I'm going to be up at castle level 13. But if you don't upgrade your castle, everything's going to hit that wall that you have to upgrade your castle before you can move anything up. So for me, I've made my utmost priority to upgrade my castle as quickly as possible for a couple reasons. One, the islands that spawn in the middle of the league map go up in level based on your castle level. You can upgrade, of course, your garrison, your defensive units are gonna be stronger with a higher castle level. And ultimately, a lot of the stuff that is unnecessary for castle upgrades is kind of peripheral, like the collectors. I'm not too gung-ho on upgrading my collectors. So this is what I'll do. Upgrade my castle if I can. That's the first thing that gets upgraded. And then immediately, I will jump on over to my gold vaults and I'll upgrade all my gold vaults because in order to go to the next level of the castle, your gold vaults basically have to be at their max possible level, right? So in other words, gold vault 10 is the max you can do before you get your castle to level 13. So I max all my gold vaults out. As soon as I do that, I will immediately go to leveling up my castle. And as you guys probably already know by now, to level up your castle, there's some prerequisites. So if my castle wasn't leveled right now, it would say something like this. You can upgrade it for, you know, 1 million gold, but first you have to get your portal to level, let's say, four, right? Well, then you go to your portal and it's almost like you opened up this expanding checkbox that keeps going lower and lower. Because then your portal's like, yeah, you can upgrade me if you go and do, see expansion level two, or you do bar three barracks level seven, you know? And so then what happens is leveling up your castle actually will cause you to level up all the essentials anyways. So there's really no reason to go just willy-nilly leveling up whatever's cheapest. There's not. Now, I'll go on that exact pathway, upgrade my castle, upgrade all my gold vaults, and then immediately upgrade whatever needs to be upgraded to get to the next castle level, and then get next castle level and repeat. But if I get that giant target on my back, and this has happened quite a bit recently, I'm not sure why, why are you guys targeting me? If I get that target on my back, then I will immediately go and start upgrading all my gold reserves, which already is somewhat of a prerequisite anyways for the castle, but I will max them out if I'm getting hit because you know, there's no purpose in trying to desperately go towards 800,000 gold if someone's, you know, taking 50, 60, 80,000 gold per a hit and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to hide gold and it's just a waste of time when you can just expand your defenses with gold reserves, right? And then after gold reserves, if I'm still getting nailed, then I'll go right over and just max out my granaries, right? Because it's the same idea. As you level up everything, you're going to have higher level abilities in leveling your spells, your troops, and that takes food. So ultimately, the gold storage and the food storage has to be maxed out anyways. So those are the things I'll go to. And it, for the most part, I will never go and upgrade my collectors unless it's necessary um, or if I'm really getting targeted and I just decide to drain all my gold so everyone's like, he's got nothing and maybe they'll look the other way, right? But for the most part, that's how I level up my kingdom. I focus entirely on the castle so I can go as quickly as possible to level 25. And really, guys, that's what I've seen is the main formula for most Zanga-based attack games. Um, if you guys remember, like, Empires and Allies, which has kind of fallen out of favor, it was the same thing. You upgrade your HQ as quickly as possible so you can get to that nuclear bomb and other things that are only available once you get there, and then your collectors are leveled up because collectors are just kind of a waste of time. If you're the kind of player that logs in once a day, collectors are great. But if you're the kind of player that's actually trying to level up in this game and get going as quickly as possible, anything that doesn't get your castle leveled up is a waste of time. And a lot of it, considering at this point, even at just level 16, upgrades are taking days, days already. And that's why I got my third builder. But there you go, hopefully that answers your questions. If you guys have anything specifically you're wondering, feel free to give me some questions down below and ask because I'd love to answer those. If you guys have your own methods that you think are stellar on leveling up your kingdoms, I'd love to hear them. Uh, maybe I'll use some of them if I think they're actually pretty good. But you know, the nice thing about this is at the end of the day, when you click the upgrade button, you're never making a mistake. At the end game of the kingdom, 
everything's going to be leveled up anyways. But I have a sneaking suspicion for the most part, any player that's worth his salt is always going to be lagging his collectors behind every other building. Because if you can spend gold on leveling up, say, the building to allow your Goliaths to be upgraded, that's way more valuable than a little bit more gold storage in uh, this little mine sitting down here. So there you go. That's my two cents on how I progress the kingdom of DBR. And you know, as far as I know, my people are relatively happy with this. If I look at the little villages down here, I can just, I hear cheering people. Nope, I've decimated all their houses for productivity sake. <laughs> But it's not a democracy. They got to do what I say. Now, right now, I'm sitting on a buttload of gold. So as soon as this upgrades, it's going to open up a lot of upgrades for me. But because I've already maxed my spells, my next one is going to be my arcane tower. And that just comes down to efficient use of resources. If I'm going to have a lot of food, I want something to spend it on. And right now, I've maxed out the spells. So I want that to be opened. So arcane, even though that may not be a prerequisite, it probably will be, but if it, even if it isn't for the next castle level, it's the next building I'm going to upgrade no matter what. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Hope you have a fantastic Saturday and weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow on Drive by Reviews. Did Team Mafia call that Paris? A Paris Tower? I've actually been to Paris's Eiffel Tower, and uh, it was big. I think it was way bigger than my Arcane Tower. But good lord, you know how long the wait in line was? I think it was like three and a half hours. <laughs> three. And they charge too much. I mean, what the flip? It's just a tower, guys. I mean, it's an iconic tower, but yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Give me that.